And so it's very important that we understand it. Now, we, I'm probably older than a good few of you, but we who are parents already, we are the digital immigrants. None of us grew up with all these devices. We've somehow or other found out about it because of our jobs or because we read uh, uh, information about them or whatever it is we do. And we've come to understand to some degree what this technology is. Our children, however, they are the digital natives. They don't know a world without technology. And so therefore, it's kind of like the first time in history that our children know more about a subject than we do. My father taught me how to drive a car. My mother told me, don't touch the stove or burn your finger. My children know more about technology than I do. Uh, maybe not in my house, but in most houses. Um, but so, but that's the important point because you see, even though they may know more about it, it's still our job to protect them because they are our clay kadosh. They are the reason that we exist, and so we have to do whatever we can to protect them. And we need to be educated about what all this stuff is in order to properly protect them. And the, the, um, I can tell many cases of this, of, of a parent confronting a child and saying, look, what is this? Why did you do the following? Why did you do this? And the child says, oh, no, no, you're totally misunderstanding. That's not this, it's that. And since you don't understand the technology, you think, okay. And, and you let them sort of um, fool, on, fool you, and we have to be very, very careful uh, about that in order to know when they're trying to trick us or not, and children will do that. Um, you're going to hear me talk about some of the various technologies that they may be using, I'm going to get into that in a minute, but I want to start out by saying that there is no solution to this problem. I didn't come here tonight with a magic wand that I can wave over the problem and it's going to go away. I can give out a few answers. I can tell you some suggestions and some tips about what to do, and certainly we will talk about that. But the real bottom line here, at the end of the day, this is a parenting issue. We'll spend some time talking about that, but the parents have to be parents and not, you know, one of the lines I use sometimes is, the internet is not your babysitter. You would no more give the keys to your car to your 12 year old and say, go take the car, I'm busy right now, I don't have time to keep you company, come back in two hours and, and then we'll see what's doing. You, there's no way anybody would do anything like that. That car can be a weapon, you can kill people. Sending your child to go play on the internet for two hours is like giving them a weapon. A weapon that they can hurt themselves with. So you're going to hear me talk about the fact that this is a parenting issue. Now, I'm really going to focus on two things tonight. One is the computer and the internet. And the second thing is the cell phones. Now, a cell phone is not just anymore a cell phone. I, I, I have any number of cell phones, a Blackberry and a cell phone. They're not just cell phones. They've got internet, they've got email, they've got texting, they've got uh, the Blackberry has BBM, which is texting basically and chatting. And um, all these phones, you can have Facebook on them, we'll talk about Facebook, and Twitter and blogging. And all these devices can do all these things. No one has to go and sit anymore at a computer and do all of this. Um, I, I have a very sad story to tell. I was sitting pretty recently, the past few months ago, I was sitting in the one of the bagel shops up in Muncie. Lunchtime, a crowd of people there, minding my own business actually. Having some soup, I'm quite going to watch the table. 
things. And uh, I noticed to my left at one of the tables three Bachram from one of the local yeshivas. There were just three Bachram there, but then my eye was drawn to what they were doing. And they each had one of these. It's an iPod Touch. It's very popular. It's probably one of the most popular devices in the world. It's not just an MP3 player that you can listen to music on. It's an MP3 player. You can play movies. It can. Uh, it has Wi-Fi, so you can go online and, and uh, go to the internet and do all kinds of things. And these three boys, in front of everybody, with no busha, were sitting and watching schmutz, terrible stuff. And I only noticed because they had their backs to me. And I, I was, I was frozen. I couldn't believe that they, you know, one that the yeshiva uh, was doing this, but I couldn't believe that he was doing it in front of me, in front of all these people. There were, there were other customers there, there were women there, there were some other children there, the, the workers were there. They weren't trying, they weren't trying to stay away from anybody. There they were, right? Right in front of my eyes. So I mentioned to the owner, you should uh, find out who these boys are. This is it's really not right. In two seconds that they had gotten up and left before anybody could really do anything. But he knew, I guess he had seen them before, whatever. He spoke to their to their uh, Shiva and he wanted to know who they were, so he couldn't describe exactly who they were, but he remembered that he has a, a security camera, so they went and looked at the security camera and they could see who they were. So the, the Roshiva called up their fathers and said, somebody witnessed what your sons were doing in, in, in the pizza shop, in the bagel shop. The, um, my name was mentioned, and um, they, uh, these three fathers called me up. And they said, how dare you be Matzah Shemra, my son? trying to, to ruin his chance for a shiva. I said, I don't know your son. I don't know who you are even. And all three of these fathers told me. So, and they were, they were like so mad at me that I had uh, gotten their sons in trouble. I said, all I know is what I saw. That's, that's all I can say is that what I saw. And I, went, I didn't go to the bagel shop to get anybody in trouble that day. I went to have soup. Now, first of all, the iPod Touch is probably the most dangerous device you can buy for your children. It, it's, it, I, I could right now, I didn't test this, but I could probably right now turn this on. I could probably find a Wi-Fi signal from here in the neighborhood somewhere and maybe probably even get online to the internet. And I can turn it on right now and lay it right here and, and watch a movie while I'm speaking. You would never know that I'm doing it. Uh, I'm not doing it, by the way. Um, <laughs> but, but the fact is, is that I could because it's so easy to be private about this. And it's, it's, it's dangerous. I made a comment once. I'm trying to be more careful about this. I, I don't really mean this, but just to make the point, if you're trying to decide whether you should buy your child one of these or not, maybe you should consider buying them a gun. Because they can probably do less damage with a gun than they can with, with this thing. This iPod Touch is a very, very dangerous uh, um, product. Um, so, 